In this TrueNAS series, we've already set up the system, added storage, created users and datasets, and share them over the network using SMB and NFS. That covers most everyday use cases. But sometimes, that's just not enough. Some workloads need more than a shared folder. They need fast, direct access to the disk, like you've plugged in a local drive. That's where iSCSI comes in. It's not your typical network share. iSCSI presents storage to your system as if it were a physical hard drive. It's perfect for certain Docker containers like databases that require reliable, high-performance storage. And even though it feels local, it's still backed by TrueNAS features like snapshots, redundancy, and centralized management. If your system ever crashes, you can simply attach the same volume to another machine and pick up right where you left off. There's just one thing. A SCSI volumes can connect to only one system at a time. But that's not a limitation, it's actually a feature. And as you start using it, you'll understand the reason. In today's video, we'll create an iSCSI share from scratch and connect it to both Linux and Windows. It's how we prepare our storage for serious, real-world applications. And if you stick around till the end, there's a bonus tip waiting for you. So without wasting any time, let's get started. I will head over to TrueNAS and navigate to the Datasets tab. To create an iSCSI share, first we need to create a ZVOL which is basically a virtual block device with a defined size. I'm going to create mine under my Infra Storage dataset. So let's select it and click on Add Zvol. Now let's give it a name. Since I'm setting this one for my AI models, which I'll connect from a Windows machine, I'll name it as AI underscore data. Then we need to set its size. I'll go with 50 GB bytes. Typing G at the end will automatically set the unit to GB bytes. If you forget to mention G, it'll set it to maybe bytes, which we don't want. Here you'll also see a bunch of advanced options like compression and deduplication, but for now we're keeping it simple, so the defaults are fine. Let's save it to create the ZVOL. Now I'm going to create another ZVOL. This one I will use with my Linux machine for Docker volumes. So I'll name it as Docker underscore volumes. Then I will set its size to 10 GB bytes and save it. Once it's created, we can see the used storage right here. If it runs out of space, just select it and click on Edit ZVOL to increase its size. For example, I will increase its size to 20 GB bytes and save it again. This is going to expand the ZVOL immediately. But keep in mind, you can only increase the size. You can't shrink it. Like here, if I try to reduce the ZVOL size to 15 GB bytes, TrueNAS will throw an error saying that shrinking isn't allowed through the user interface. Which makes sense, since it's meant to protect you from data loss. Now that we've got our ZVOLs ready, let's head over to the Shares tab to share them over iSCSI. Here, you'll see a section specifically for iSCSI shares. To get started, click on the wizard button in the top right corner of this section. For the target, we'll leave it as Create New and click on Next. Now let's give it a name. Also make sure that the extent type is set to device. In the device dropdown, you'll see all the ZVOLs which are not yet set up with iSCSI. Here I will select the AI data. For the sharing platform, I will select modern OS with the block size 4K. One thing we need to keep in mind that here we cannot use underscores in the name field. If you try to do, you'll get an error that says invalid format. Now let's click on Next. Under the Protocol options, we can just select Create New in the Portal field. Then click on the Add button to specify an IP address. From here, you can choose which IPs are allowed to access the iSCSI share. Since I'm on a local network, I'll keep it simple and allow all by selecting 0.0.0.0. This will make the share accessible to all devices on the network. Later, we can bind it to a specific IP address so that a single machine can connect to it, which adds an extra layer of security. Then click on Save. It'll ask to enable the iSCSI service. Let's keep it enabled and hit Start. Now that our iSCSI share is ready, let me show you how to connect to it from a Windows 11 machine. Just open Start menu and search for iSCSI Initiator. Since we're opening it for the first time, you'll get a pop-up to start the iSCSI Initiator, 
This also ensures it runs automatically every time the Windows boots. Now before we connect, I'll open this PC. Here you can see, currently we only have the C drive where Windows is installed. So let's go ahead and enter the IP address of our TrueNAS system into the target field. Then click on Quick Connect. You'll see that Windows has found the iSCSI target AI data and successfully connected to it. So let's click on Done and click on OK to close this window. But still we cannot see any new drive showing up in this PC. That's because the disk is connected, but it hasn't been initialized or formatted yet. To initialize the disk, right-click on the Start button and open Disk Management. You'll see a pop-up asking how you want to initialize the new disk. As GPT is already selected for this, let's click on OK to proceed. Now the disk is listed as unallocated space. To make it usable, just right-click on it and select New Simple Volume. Once the wizard appears, click on Next to continue. Here you can create partitions like any other regular hard drives, but I will use the full size as a single partition. So let's click on Next. We can also assign a drive letter for our iSCSI share. D works fine for me. Let's move on to the next step. Here, I will keep the file system as NTFS and clear the volume label. So it will show up as local disk. Then click on Next, and finally click on Finish. And it now appears in this PC as the D drive. You can use it exactly like a physical hard drive, whether to store Steam games, AI models, or even database volumes. Now, let me show you how to connect the iSCSI share from a Linux machine. But before that, we will share the Docker volume ZVOL, like the same way we did earlier for AI data. So let's go back to TrueNAS and click on the wizard button in the iSCSI share section. Here, I will leave target as create new and click on next. This time, I'll name it Docker volumes. For this one also, I will keep the extent type to device. And from the device dropdown, select the Docker volume ZVOL. Under sharing platform, I will choose modern OS and click on next. For the portal, we already have access to all the networks. So I will select this option and save it. Now let's connect to this iSCSI share from a Linux system. I've already SSH'd into a Linux machine, which I prepared for this demo. To use iSCSI in Linux, we need the open iSCSI package, but in most of the modern distributions, it comes pre-installed. I also have it installed on this machine. Next, to see all the attached disks and their partitions on this machine, I will run the command lsblk. Right now, only the SDA disk is listed here, which is the main SSD where Ubuntu is installed. Just like we did on Windows, first we need to discover the iSCSI shares. To do that, we'll use this command. Make sure to replace the target IP with your TrueNAS IP address. As you can see in the output, both iSCSI shares are listed, AI data and Docker volumes. Since I configured three IPs for my TrueNAS instance, I see three entries for each shares, but in your case, you'll likely see just one per share. From the output, I will copy the target name part as we need this to connect to the iSCSI share. Now we need to run this command. Let's replace the target name and target IP address and hit enter. The iSCSI share is now attached. Let's confirm it by running LSBLK again. You can see now we have a new disk named SDB is attached in this machine with 20 gigabytes of space, but it doesn't have any partitions yet. So let's format it using sudo fdisk slash dev slash SDB. Inside fdisk, type in for new partition, then P for primary partition. Set the partition number to one and just hit enter to accept the default values. Once that's done, type W to write the changes to disk. Now let's run LSBLK again. You can see a new partition is created and named as SDB1. Let's format it as EXT4 using this command. And now the disk is ready to use. But one more thing, we want this iSCSI target to reconnect automatically on boot. To do that, run this command. Just make sure to replace the target name and target IP address. Then hit enter. 
Now let's mount the iSCSI share using FS tab, so it will load automatically every time the system boots up. We'll start by editing the slash etc slash fs tab file. Here we need to add a new entry using this format. Just replace the X with your actual device name. In my case, that is SDB1. And set the mount path to where you want to mount it. For me, it is slash var slash lib slash docker slash volumes. Once done, press Ctrl X, then Y and hit enter to save and close the file. In this example, I'm mounting the iSCSI share directly to the Docker volumes directory. And it works perfectly fine. But personally, I don't prefer this approach. Because anytime we want to make changes inside the Docker volumes, we need to have root access for that. Instead, I actually mount the iSCSI share as a directory in my home directory, and then bind that path to a Docker volume. It gives me more flexibility, and it's allow me to perform everyday tasks without elevated permissions. Now, I already have Docker installed on this system, but if we try to access the Docker volumes directory, it's showing permission denied. We need pseudo privileges to access this directory. So let's switch to root user and try to access the directory again. And there we go. Now I will run LS to see what's inside the directory. As you can see, there are some existing Docker file present in volumes directory. Next, let's see if any containers are running on this machine or not. I'll run the command docker space ps for that. As you can see, there is no containers currently running on this machine. So I'll go ahead and run sudo mount a to mount the iSCSI drive to the docker volumes path. We also need to run systemctl daemon reload to refresh systemd. But if you're using this setup with docker, you might face one issue. Docker often starts before the iSCSI share is mounted, which can cause the container to fail when starting up. But don't worry, I got a quick tip to fix that. We'll update the Docker service file to make it wait until the mount is ready. So let's open the file in edit mode using this command. Inside the file, you'll see a comment that says edits below this line will be discarded. So make sure to add your lines above it. In my case, I would add two lines right before that comment. The first one points to the actual mount path. In my case, that's slash var slash lib slash docker slash volumes. And the second line uses the same path but with hyphens instead of slashes. That's how the system tracks the mount. Let's save and close this file with Control X, then Y, and Enter. Now we need to reload everything. For that, we will use the command sudo system ctl daemon reexec, then daemon reload, and finally restart Docker. And that's it. Now, every time your system boots up, Docker will wait until the iSCSI mount is ready before starting up. If you're planning to host a service on an iSCSI volume, make sure to check out the next video where we'll be using this iSCSI share with Docker or Kubernetes workloads. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comment below.